Welcome back to Pegasus McGinnis Elder Law Hour. I'm Barbara McGinnis, where we're always talking about the issues related to advanced age, disability, and unexpected illness. In today's show, we're talking about particularly about low income, low resource seniors, and how do we help? And I'm your co-host, Tim Takis, and we're in this segment, we're gonna be talking about housing for seniors. Uh, with the expansion of Nashville and high cost of housing and high cost of assisted living and so on and so forth, there's becoming a great need for seniors with, for housing who have low incomes. And with us today, is Caitlin Clifton, who is Executive Director of CT&M Gallatin. Welcome, Caitlin. Thank you. Okay, everybody wants to know what CT&M Gallatin is. I know sure. I know it, and I think Barb, everybody here knows it, but maybe not anybody else. Sure, absolutely. Uh, Christian Towers was a high-rise building that was meant for senior independent living in the 70s. And since then, we have expanded in several different ways. And that includes a secondary housing community. It's all independent. But then we decided to expand with social services, psychologically, and with certified senior advisors because apartments are just not enough anymore. Yeah. Right. So what is the typical resident like? And what's the age requirement to live there? Our residents are typically 62 and up. Um, fully independent, very retirement campus, very um, active. A lot of our seniors work, drive. We have a lot of married couples. Mm. Um, very sociable in our approach. Nice. Okay, so people pay for this. Is there a sliding scale? How do you? Okay, so my mom, mm -hmm. assuming assuming my mom is out there and is looking for something at CT and M. How does she get in? How does she qualify? How does she pay for it? Tell us about that process. Great question. Great question. Residents who come to us or applicants who come to us, we look at their income based on what they are bringing in for income, what they hold in assets, and we do it sliding scale so that it is affordable. And that's not unlike several other uh, opportunities. Where we differ is that that program amount that we set usually is about 30% of gross monthly income but it includes the rent, a cable package, all the trash removal, maintenance service, all the utilities. Yeah. Wow. Now so people, it's very inclusive. Now we, I know there are people that are watching that, that, that are familiar with what Section 8 housing, is, that, is, this what, is this what we're talking about? It is a specialized standard of Section 8, yes. Okay, so tell us about what Section 8 is for, sure. those, for our viewers who aren't familiar with that. Absolutely, in several different ways for several different demographics, Section 8, basically will bill federal government, not Medicare. That, that is one of the most un misunderstood sure. concepts. It's not in medical, it's not in insurance wise, but we bill the Department of HUD for senior living only. Housing and urban development. Yes. Yeah. Gotcha. All right, mm -hmm. so it's a federal program. Yes, it's gotcha. wonderful. Great. So what's the typical waiting list like? Our waiting list is booming, um, as you know. Um, yeah. We're, we are finding more and more seniors are wanting to downsize. Our waiting list right now is about a year and a half to two years. So people need to plan ahead. Yes, planning mm -hmm. ahead is key. There is no uh, substitute for preparedness with senior housing and even transition care. Okay, so you literally have to know a year and a half or two years in advance that you want to go there? Does, does that, that doesn't sound realistic to me, or is it? It gets complicated mm -hmm. and it's hard. Um, we suggest that before seniors turn 62, they start thinking about what does downsizing look like? Could I go from a house to an apartment? Would that be easier on me? Mm -hmm. And the way that I look at it or our perspective is what about the things that you don't have to do? What if you didn't have to worry about a plumber or mowing the, the grass? What about if the refrigerator goes out? Some of the things that we can take away. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's really important to start thinking about those things, not at 80, but at 60. Mm -hmm. Wow. And that's, real, and that's really hard for it the planning hard. a hard, because 60s now is the new, new 50. 40, yeah, right? right? I, I mean, those it are is. still very right. active people it is. thinking right. about giving up their home home to live right. in, in an apartment setting. Yeah. Absolutely. That, that's really and hard. And 63 is the new 40, you know, that's, that's right. 43 now. It is. Stockfield, it is. For those of us who and have reached know, there. And you know, at CTNM we really treat it that way. Uh -huh. um, yeah. I, 
I have a high esteem for the older adult, but I think that it's it's sad to think that retirement or downsizing is something to dread. Mm -hmm. And so we want to infuse our program with the fun things, the meaningful things, the memories and the fellowship, and not so much you have to get rid of your things. Well, tell us about the, so, so let's talk about that. Tell us about what an apartment looks like because you know, my, my, my perception, I think maybe of other viewers' perception would be is, is it's almost like institutional living for people who, who have no money. Absolutely. You know, and, it, and you're, there's no amenities, you know, that maybe you'll get lucky and, and Absolutely. you know, so, so. That's a huge stigma uh, right. in this industry. Yeah, and so that's help us with that. Absolutely. That's my passion. I wanted to get away several years ago from the dormitory style institutional living and so we have really tried to make this more homey. Um, there are paintings and classes and education and for instance last week we had prom, senior okay. prom. Uh -huh. We do things. Real seniors. Yes. Gotcha. <laughs> a throwback to, to uh -huh. high school prom we called it and we had a blast and it's not something that most people would think seniors would want to do. And so we really try for engagement. If it's an, if this strategy that my staff employs is is intentional, then it can be positive aging. Mm -hmm. You know, when you take away the loneliness, you can infuse with meaning. Uh -huh. And you're right. Sometimes apartment living seems very sterile, mm -hmm. but it doesn't have to. I know one question that a lot of people would ask me that I would ask if I was planning ahead. Mm -hmm. What about pets? Absolutely. We think pets are part of the home. Mm -hmm. um, we have pets on site. Uh, they are, fur babies are, are a big thing. Um, wow. We have several activities surrounding our can, pets. Can I, can I cook there? Absolutely. So you have a full kitchen or something? You have a, a yes. stove and, a, all of our and apartments. ovens and all that? And yes, all of our apartments. Not like assisted living where they don't let you do that? Not at all. Not okay. at all. All of our apartments are standalone. Um, they are, you have a private lock, private P.O. box. They are not shared. They all the apartments have a full kitchen, full bathroom. Um, mm -hmm. We have new uh, aesthetics. Uh -huh. You know, it doesn't yes. look like a old folks home. Uh -huh. We really want to get away from that stigma yeah. because not all aging is nursing home. Right. right. Not all aging is is that stigma that we so dread and kind of that negative narrative that our society kind of puts on the older adult. Mm -hmm. But talk about that. When when independent living is no longer appropriate, w what are the options? Bringing home health in, maybe that's not enough, then what? Absolutely. Um, I'm really fortunate in this industry. About 10 years ago, other aging providers were looking at expanding and they did a medical intervention. And so they began really marketing these continuum of care. You start in independent living, then you can move to their brand of assisted and their brand of skilled nursing. And we decided not to do that, uh, mostly because we are right in the middle of Gallatin, mm -hmm. where I am surrounded by mm -hmm. the hospital, right. a stellar assisted living, a stellar skilled nursing. I have home health agencies and all kinds of community partners right at my door. Mm -hmm. And so instead, we expanded socially. We expanded with senior advisors, we expanded with social work, and we um, expanded with our references and our resources, one being Tim Takis, um, and several right. attorneys, doctors, whom, whomever we needed, kind of in a lineup. And so when, when the older adult finds that they're having problems living by their self, or maybe they have a crisis event that pushes that need for further care, we can consult with that. We pull in the references needing, needed, mm -hmm. and it may be, depending on their circumstances, their insurance and their family needs, they may go live with family, and mm -hmm. we stay with them. We stay okay. available to them. So there are some medical criteria. We know that some people can't stay there. Is that right? Absolutely. Um, it is technically for those who can maintain their own lifestyle. Right. Is how we like to say it. Now, that's not to, you know, not to say that, that that's different with every person. Sure. Yeah. All right. right. All right. We've got about 40 seconds left. Sure. So tell us about how we can get well, in touch with uh, Yeah, CTA we've got now. contact information we can put up, and then you yes. can tell us about that. Absolutely. Feel free to reach out to us. You also can go to the CSA, the Certified Senior Advisor website at csa.us, and you can find a Certified Senior Advisor in this area.
Great. Okay. Thank you, Caitlin, yes, for being ma'am. here and telling us about CTNM. And when we come back, we're going to be talking about how do you, if you can't afford to pay for care at home or in a facility, what are your choices? We'll be right back.